Welcome to a bright sunny day. An hour outside of Bangkok, I've been told that this is the place to check out some fruit. That's where we're going. Welcome to Jainok Kratong Songkrung, which is known for the Som Tao fruit cut up and dressed in an amazing way. In the couple of days that we've been here, we haven't seen fruit scents of this size, making dressed elaborate fruit dishes of this quality, but there is fruit everywhere. This, I think, is what we're here for, Som Tao, also known as a cotton fruit. I'm excited because I have no idea what to expect. The outside of this fruit is a little bit like a pet. It's a little bit furry. It's orange, striped. It's quite large, but I have no idea what's inside of it. Oh! Oh! Is this Som Tao? The middle is like mangosteen. It's like slurpy, a little bit slimy in the middle. The outside? Apricot texture. Looks a little bit like a peach, tastes a little bit like a sour peach. The center, there's a pit in the middle that you spit out. But the outside, you slurp, try to scrape it, as much of it off with your teeth. Mm. Cup and cup. I see honeydew, dragon fruit. Oh, by the way, this is the dedication to fruit we have as Asian chefs. But that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is somtao. Here in the back in the production kitchen, She's peeling through it. The skin seems quite pliable, but it's got a good amount of fiber. So we're soaking it in water. And the big boy comes out. Wow, wow, okay, okay, okay. She's not chopping all the ways through. It looks like what she's going for is a spiral at a bit of an angle through the top, through the bottom. <gasps> she presses it open. Wow, beautiful. Can I taste? Oh, it needs to be, okay, yes. <laughs> this is where the bulk of it's done. It looks like it's soaked in a little bit of a brine, but everyone all day is doing this. Chef told us that she prepped 1,000 portions of this for today alone. Here she is doing the takeout. When she presses it into the takeout container, she'll get a nice blossoming swirl. That way when the dressing and the seasoning and the sauce goes over the top, you can pick it up individually for pieces. Syrup, okay. This is cane sugar, the chef says, has been cooked for eight hours and then infused with chilies just to balance out that sweetness. So it's not just one dimension. And then over the top, peanuts, coconut, little baby shrimp. Wow, no way. Get out of here. Oh yeah, yeah, wow. Assumptions are being challenged. Fruit usually is sweet. You have that classic pairing of peanuts and coconut, both of those a little bit nutty. You're expecting some earthy toasted brightness. I'm expecting a little bit of a punch from the chili for that spice. And then for a thick syrup, maybe something that lasts a little bit longer, maybe something right on the edge of cloying. Whoa. The fruit itself is tart. But the first feeling is a sort of buttery, supple, richness. There's obviously a little bit like that of green apple, a little bit of those tannins at the back of your mouth. There's a bit of guava, there's a little bit of sour sauce, and the syrup is really sweet, but it's really balanced out with that chili and that saltiness. It's slippery, it's smooth, but it's not quite silky. There's a little bit of firmness because it gives way, like a peach. So toasted coconut and peanuts. You smell that nuttiness, you smell that fragrance. There is a whiff of that dried shrimp and it's very sweet. This is definitely a summer dish. Imagine this at a picnic, carved out so that you can take a piece on your own, eat it over conversation. I mean, look out here, all these people queuing up, all these people here first thing in the morning. This is one of the most popular fruit stalls here outside of Bangkok. I also see something over here. What is this one for? For green mango? <laughs> this is at the front of the stall. Okay, cool. Um, here's some beautifully cut green mango with that embellishment, with that specialty knife. Fruit carving is a big part of the culture. This looks like chopped shallots, more little baby dried shrimp, chilies, that same syrup, and I smell fish sauce. And as it sits here in the front, all those flavors come together. And one bowl, molasses red brown sugar, 
It looks like tamarind with a little bit of chili and uh, crystal white sugar and maybe some palm sugar also. When you order green mango, this is what you get over the top. Look at this beautiful glass. And a little bit of a topping over here too, dried shrimp. Thank you. This is the queen of fruit herself. <laughs> so green mango, unlike um, yellow ripe mango, is less ripe. But also, um, you're eating it for a different flavor. So there's a little bit of savoriness. It's significantly less sweet, and you want some sourness and tartness in it. Mm. This is really good. This is really good. No. <laughs> It's like every flavor together, every single part of your palate is hit. Here's that bright orange shrimp. This is usually a, a saltwater shrimp. These are shrimpy. They're dry, so a little bit crispy, a little bit chewy in the middle. It's giving us salinity to balance out all the aggressive sugar. The mango itself is nice and tart, almost like a chip for when you dip it. It's almost like three stages. Sweet and sour first, and then the savoriness from the shrimp, the fish sauce. And then finally, chili. Just like lasting chili heat at the back of your palate. I've had versions of this before with pork and different other contexts, but within fruit, this is really quite special. Is green mango a different type of mango? Yeah. Oh, I see. So green mango is a totally different species of mango. They're eaten primarily for their texture and their sourness. When they're ripe, they're not as good. So don't assume that green mangoes are just raw versions of the regular mangoes that we get that we eat sweet. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let me tell you what's typical. What's typical is a fruit sand in Southeast Asia. What's typical is a cornucopia of delicious sweet fruits that you can get, the variety that you can get in a place like Bangkok. What's not typical is the popularity of this place. All day, you're just gonna see people drive up, pop up to get their fruit, hop back in their car, onto their way. There are a couple of things that make this dish uniquely Thai. One, the availability of this fruit. If I could get this on a regular basis, I'd be messing with the dish all the time. Second, the technique. Cutting it so that you can smush it down, spiral it, share it. Third, the seasoning. Obvious sweetness, fruit, sweet on sweet, but also the chilies. That echo, that back spice, the savoriness from the fish sauce, from the shrimp. It all comes together into something that is a full pilot, almost full body experience. For us tourists, for people who aren't here in Bangkok, I think one of the most amazing things is to explore the fruit culture because of the variety of textures, the variety of sweets and flavors. Part of it is standing outside in the sweltering heat like this, waiting for your fruit to be cut up and getting it dressed so beautifully, so perfectly. It's not something I've ever had before, and it's something I'm looking forward to having again the next time I'm back. Behind you, by the way, durian. Stuffed with steak and rice. With the queen herself, Jay Nokratam Songkrang. Ha <laughs> ha